So here we are in the Woodside Apartments. We've made it to the welcome home room. <laughs> Another balcony walk. Oh, okay. Apparently not a balcony walk. I guess this room was just for ammo or something. So I took a lot of hits for nothing. Man, this place is a dump. What do you want to bet it was like this before Silent Hill did all of its weird evil shit to it? This is where we put that apple. And it gives you like a view into the next room. But what we actually want to do is <laughs> shove this out of the way. Is there anything in here I wanted to collect? I don't think so. And awesome, it locked us in. So this puzzle is somebody, I guess, was locked in here and kept prisoner for a long time. So you have a riddle here. Right where the rooftops pierce through the night. Left homebound footprints and right to the river so the three numbers here you gotta find this one here this one here and this one up here that it took me a while to find so it's 43 or no that's 13 43 13 what's the riddle again um 13, 11, and 7. And there's a safe here. And some sneezes working out. Thirteen, eleven, seven. Okay, did I get my numbers right? I get my numbers right. <laughs> Thirteen, seven, eleven. Thirteen, seven, eleven. Idiot. And we get a coin. And a key. Um, steel key. And that'll let us out of here. Where are we? Somewhere where there is danger. Yeah, bugs. All oh, the orchid men. There's another one. Bitch. <laughs> That's what we got. Ammo. More and more ammo. Health drink. Awesome. I like here. <laughs> you got a chair. And there's plastic on the floor, and there's blood and duct tape like somebody got kidnapped. But, you know, there's a key here, so it's all good. Second floor, small staircase. And then we have one of these locks here, which allows us to return back to... Back to, uh... Something, I don't know. Oh, through the happy birthday room. Or the welcome home room. I guess this did serve something of a purpose. <laughs> Second floor small staircase is a staircase that's up on the north end of the map. So we're going to have to wrap our way around to that. Of course, we can't go there straight. We've got to balcony walk Motherfucker. 
Where's he at? This flashlight sucks. <laughs> Damn it, it was out of fucking view and it's still here. That is bullshit. <laughs> you died. Why are you still alive? <laughs> Why are you still alive? <laughs> Dissolves. Down. Hello. How many bullets do I have? Let's take a ganders at the map. Not a whole lot we can do here. Maybe I can unlock this. That's just a quick way back, so I don't have to take the staircase again. Here, Eddie. Ooh. Keep setting corpses. Hey, who's there? It wasn't me. I didn't do it. I didn't do it, I swear. Hey, are you okay? I didn't do anything. He was like that when I got here. Oh, you mean the man back there? In the kitchen? I didn't do it. I swear I didn't kill him. Yeah, it's all right. I'm, I'm not saying that you did. Look, my name is James. James Sunderland. Um, Eddie. Eddie, okay. So, uh, do you live here, Eddie? No. I'm not even from this town. It's just... Something brought you here. Yeah. Yeah, you could say that. I... Well, they came at me. I didn't know what to do, so I ran. I came here. Figured it might be safe, but, but then I found the guy in the fridge. Easy, deal. Deep breaths. <sighs> Look, this place, it, it's not safe. These things, this whole town, there's something wrong with it. it might be best if you just get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Hey, you want to come with? Maybe together we can find a way out of this town. Oh, sorry, but I can't leave. Not yet. I... I need to find someone. Oh. And, uh, Eddie. Be careful. Yeah. You too. <laughs> Eddie. So we've run into two people so far. We're three people so far in Silent Hill. Eddie, Angela, and Lara. Now, Lara is the only one that we haven't had any kind of conversation with yet. So, yeah, she's a uh, pen in the ass, if anything. But Eddie's another, it was another interesting individual because he is quite obviously guilty of something here. <laughs> Find a corpse in the fridge and a guy immediately protesting his innocence. Hey, a computer. Immediately protesting his innocence. Oh, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I just found him that way. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, considering everything's going on here, I don't think anyone was going to question you on that, but see, look at the lighting just wigged out there for a second. Football! A football poster. So, I always wonder at points in which characters are... Come at me, bro. I'll take you out. Because every... 
every character that we're running into here has their own version of Silent Hill that they're trapped on. Except for maybe Lara, who is perhaps not really trapped here at all. But Eddie... And uh, so it's possible that at different points, characters like James will encounter other characters' versions of the world. So it's possible that James is living in his own and then has just suddenly stumbled into Eddie's. Because every Silent Hill in this version, in Silent Hill 2, it seems as though what it does, the city does, is it generates a personalized hell for everybody. Instead of just being something like in the first game where it was a list of twisted thoughts generating the city, generating the monsters and all that, everybody's got their own hell. But there are times when you're going to move out of your own into somebody else's. Could have shot you. Could have shot you. Fucker. All right, so we have two of the three coins. And I have no healing items. And there's another one. There's fucking another one. This motherfucker. Uh, is there another way... It's weird because it, I, I got lost in this for a little bit because it seems like there's a door somewhere that there isn't. I'm not even going to engage you. And this is where we are. So I got a key, but which key was that? That does not look like Mary. <laughs> I didn't get a key, I got the coin. Anyway, while we're here, I'll just drop off some of these coins in here. I got the one more that's in the garbage chute that I gotta get. And I think I gotta go to get to the door in order to gain access to it. So let's head back over to this small staircase and go up. Uh, yeah, we're on the third floor, so virgin territory. Something that I do have to say, I think maybe they dropped the ball a little bit on this, is gating your progress through things which don't seem like they're relevant. Or things that it doesn't feel like you're actually doing. So what you'd want to do normally is a sort of Metroidvania kind of thing where you gain a key or an ability or you, or you go and you find you find a locked door and then you have to search for the key. Or the puzzle piece to unlock it like the coins or something like that. Simple but it works. They're renovating this place. They're doing a shit job. Where are you going? Oh, 
motherfucker. <laughs> so you'd find a key and you would like, oh, well, that's room 201. I can go unlock that now. So you head back over to that. What they're doing in this game, though, I'm less appreciative of. <laughs> that shit is you'll progress to a certain point and then you'll hear a noise or something like that and it's like oh well something has opened up and I gotta figure out what that is bitch <laughs> So you'll make it to a certain point, you'll hear a noise, or Lara will run by, or whatever. It's like, oh, well, I guess she opened the door, or something like that. But it doesn't feel like progress that I'm making. It just feels like, oh, you walked down a hallway, so now something is something that you weren't able to get through before is now unlocked. You're like, yeah, that doesn't feel satisfactory. That doesn't feel... That doesn't feel like... Dude, damn it! Punishing me. Stop it with that shit. Of course, of course. Hiding. And now I have no items and I'm damn near dead. Because of all these cheap hits. There's gotta be another healing item around here somewhere. Cheap hits. Cheap hits. Damn it. Again. You did it to me again. And these things you can't like successfully hit them as many times. Hit him once, and back off. But they may hit you anyway, because, you know... Yeah, okay, that's not crazy or nothing. It's, it's, it's a little bit frustrating. And it's not like, it's not playing by its own rules, too. Because of the radio. The radio should be what you um, what you use to determine if something is safe or not. Like if you hear static, that means an enemy's in here. If you don't hear static, the enemy's not in here. This thing just sort of appears out of nowhere with no static to warn you. Right, I guess that really was just for the syringe. Oh, and the health drink. I really should just leave.
can see the room where I need to dislodge the garbage from. But I don't know how to access it. It's just over here. I hear some static. Trapped in an idiotic um, running around like a moron thing. I was forgetting something. I was forgetting something. Got to go back, and I got myself turned around immediately myself turned around immediately. There was a crawl space that you needed to get through. God damn it. I'm done with this shit. I'm in here. Regenerating enemies. Don't have regenerating enemies in survival horror games. <laughs> How about that? How's that about that for a fucking rule? So here's a can of juice. Found it right here. Here's the garbage chute. Toss it in. This lodges the trash. Didn't even get a chance to drink one. So that is... I ain't even gonna look. Heading back down to the surface. That's the second floor. honestly doesn't make a lot of sense to me because the garbage chute takes it into the courtyard instead of into like by the street so you toss your garbage into here someone's gonna have to take it from this dumpster hey how you doing out to the street for the garbage men to collect in the original game, it was definitely a case of it dumped it out next to the street. And now we have a puzzle to, to complete. Uh, th three bright coins. The uh, wind from behind the maiden doth blow. The beautiful flower alone has to grow. Wind from behind the maiden doth blow. Okay, so... There we go. And doth approach, his blade now revealed. So, there. Away from the man doth maiden flee towards the flower away from the tree. She moves there. Once through a flower of venomous glee, once maiden now stone doth be, she was killed by the snake. And dust remain as blade never met the serpent's vein. So I move him there. Beastard's teeth in the flush doth bore. He was failed, she is no more. I think she goes up there. She died. And we got a key. 201. Now 201 is a door that I stumbled upon way long time ago. <clears throat> Do me a favor, don't spawn any new enemies on me. 201, it's 101. Head up. To the right, 
and it was a door that I wasn't able to get to quite a long time ago. But finally, we get access. The moment of truth has come. Nice big place we have here. Ooh, health drink. There we go, our first real encounter with Pyramid Head. Holy shit, that guy is a pain in the ass. <laughs> One of the most legendary... Um... Oh shit, I didn't think I wanted to go through here just yet. One of the most legendary examples of of a horror game villain. One that um, unfortunately has become something of a kind of mascot for the series, even though its existence is. You know, I'm not going to get into this. i got to end the episode now, and I'll pick it up with the next one. <laughs>